Uh, I was in the, the Navy for about 30 years uh, and very broadly sort of 10 years in submarines, 10 years staff and, and training people uh, and about sort of 10 years doing other things. So in 2005 though? I, I it came to an end of my time in the Navy and uh, had to find something to do and there was an advertisement that attracted me and that was the, the job of Speaker Secretary at the House of Commons. So that was working for Michael Martin? It was, yeah. This is a big job. There's a fair amount of pomp to it. But it means running the Speaker's office too. And the Speaker's Secretary has a place in the chamber at the Speaker's left hand, from where he can pass notes. When John Burko was appointed to the role in 2009, Mr Sinclair was in his place, waiting for him. So how did you get on with the new speaker? I think our problem was that he would not communicate. It was as if we had to best guess what he wanted. And that will always lead to mistakes. And, and this happened a number of times and, and it seemed to be more frequent. And the speaker responded in a way that I can only say is a, is a form of bullying. And that is to show anger and to thump the table. Uh, to you know, say that somebody has failed in front of others. It, it seemed to get more frequent. Uh, it, it became very difficult to try and communicate through that. And of course, what builds up is a sort of spell of, of failure. We're not doing what we're meant to be doing. And clearly, you know, he's angry about it. So that would get to you? It, it gets to you because you want to avoid that anger. Uh, because sometimes, you know, he would denigrate you in a particular way through mimicking or, you know, or yet again something has gone wrong. Uh, sometimes he would say in front of, uh, uh, you know, somebody who was working for you that, uh, you know, that your boss had failed. Uh, and, and that is it's quite hard. Hats off, strangers! Newsnight has spoken to witnesses to moments when these things happened, who confirm this picture. Mr Sinclair has also shown us excerpts from his contemporaneous diary, which logs what happened and when. So his anger was a key part of all of this? Yes, um, it, it seemed to be over the top anger. Um, I'm not sure he was completely in control. The, you know, the arms would wave around. I mean, there was one afternoon I was uh, working at my desk and he came in and he was absolutely furious about something. Uh, he asked for some information from another part of the house and it had been very slow in uh, coming uh, and uh, I prodded for an early uh, resolution of this from, uh, and, and he knew that but uh, he held me responsible and there was a tirade of how I'd let him down. It was quite the worst thing, a lot of bad language. And suddenly his mobile phone, which he'd been holding, was, was uh, uh, flung on the desk in, in front of me and it, and it broke into a lot of bits. And it was a, a pretty dramatic moment. Um, and he left the office shortly afterwards. It's an anger, uh, uh, you know, a visible frustration. Uh, I don't say it was thrown at me. I got hit with bits of it. So you've described to us being undermined in front of your own staff, being shouted at, rages phone smashing. It must have taken a toll on you. I couldn't see what he was after other than perhaps you know me moving on and I found the the temper and the uh, and the sort of bullying method was it, it just lowered your horizons so that that's the worst thing about it because it is demeaning uh, and and perhaps one of the worst aspects of it is uh, from time to time you, you would hear yourself mimicked and your thought then is, is that really how he sees me? It removes the dignity and I, I think we all know that every job in the land has to have some dignity. Uh, well, I felt at the time that you know, the dignity had been removed. You would walk to work with a, with a heavy heart. Uh, the horizon suddenly was, was low. Uh, it, was, it was not a good feeling. It was a, a feeling of, 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 of failure. Former colleagues of Mr Sinclair have corroborated the toll that it took on him. Witnesses have also confirmed that he had raised concerns with senior managers about what was being done to him. Did you bring this to anyone's attention? Uh, yes, I did. 
you know, I felt, look, I'm not getting this right. Uh, I need to, to bring it to the attention of my effective line manager, my boss, uh, and that is the clerk of the house. So on a number of occasions, I went to him and explained what had happened. And I revealed to him that uh, I didn't think I was producing the goods. But on the other hand, I thought the speaker's behaviour, and the bullying in particular, was uh, uh, way over the top, and, uh, and it was making things difficult. Now, as to complaint, well, there's no real route for the Speaker's Secretary to do that. Uh, the Speaker appoints his personal staff. So you're in this grim position where you're, you're unhappy, the Speaker seems to be unhappy, and your line manager can't seem to do anything about this. How does it resolve itself? May 2010 election, uh, Speaker re-elected and re-elected as Speaker by the House. And very shortly after that, he asked if uh, he could, I could come through because he wanted to, to talk through uh, a number of things. Uh, and I thought to myself, well, actually, maybe this is a fresh start. We can you know, actually have a chat and see how things in this new session could be better. Uh, and when I went in, he was you know, very uh, charming and, uh, and gracious, and I sat down. And he said almost immediately, look, I'm going to redesign uh, the office and, and, and make some changes. And I, I don't have a part for you in that change. Uh, I've been working with the clerk of the house for some time on this matter. And so in a way I thought, well, actually that's quite a relief. So they gave you something they called a compulsory early retirement, which was part of which was an £85,000 lump sum. Yes. Yeah. But there were conditions attached to that. I, I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement uh, that I wouldn't uh, make complaint about you know, my departure, uh, nor you know, talk about it to the press. And um, why do you think they gave you that NDA? I mean, that's quite an unusual thing for the House. I can only think it was because of, of the, the detail of, of what had happened. Uh, you know, the, the, the bullying um, and, the, you know, the manner of, uh, of you know, my, my leaving. In return for £86,250, Mr Sinclair had to agree to refrain from instituting any complaint against the employer and to make no public statement or comments relating to the employee's service with the House of Commons. How do you feel about having signed that non-disclosure agreement? I thought at the time that it was keeping the good name of the House. How do you feel about it now? It's in the public interest to know why I left. Yes, it breaks that non-disclosure agreement, but it's the truth. There was bullying. So this flat denial that it didn't happen is just not the case. Uh, and I don't think the House has done enough yet to solve it. it it's right across the board. And, and clearly it's a, an issue that uh, uh, must be resolved. Order. This is not the only case involving Mr Burko, who made a statement on this topic to the House last year. Let me make it clear. There must be zero tolerance of sexual harassment or bullying here at Westminster or elsewhere. Newsnight has previously reported on the case of Kate Ems, Mr Sinclair's replacement. Ms Ems had to step away from the Speaker's office after less than a year. Her managers were told she had post-traumatic stress disorder. Mr Burko has denied bullying her. We reported that uh, managers in the House were told that Kate Ems, your successor, got post-traumatic stress disorder from that job. How did you respond to that? Well, that really concerned me because uh, I think if I actually said to myself, I'm not signing this non-disclosure agreement, or I'd put in a complaint, or I'd done actually what anybody should do if they've suffered a, a, a bullying incident, is to speak out and get it resolved, uh, then she might not have been put in that position. You know, I'd signed a cover-up, and uh, in a cynical way, I'd been paid to do it. Uh, and, you know, that's not a good feeling. Following Newsnight's previous reports, the House of Commons has agreed to start an inquiry into the treatment of the House's apolitical staff. Westminster has a problem with both bullying and harassment. What kind of a mark does it leave on you? Uh, I spent quite a lot of time not sleeping and, and revisiting things. Uh, and as the years go by, you know, that eases. Uh, you do remember every detail. 
uh, there's always, I think, because of the the, the spell inflicted, uh, uh, a sense of of failure, uh, and you know that's not enjoyable. It's not a not a good memory. Um, I, I used to say to myself, I, I wouldn't really want to go back to the House of Commons because I don't want to meet my own ghost. But I have a huge respect for it as an institution and the House of Commons service, which for five years I was proud to be part of. Um, but no, it, it's 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 not a good experience, and and what you guys have exposed is that uh, things are really no better, uh, and that makes me angry, and that's why I, I, I want to speak out. And the same old things and memories and detail are all coming back as if they were yesterday. Uh, I kept notes at the time, and I have not read them in the past eight years, but I've been looking at them now, and it brings it home just how difficult it was. So, just so we're clear, a prominent elected individual bullies a member of public staff. That member of staff is paid off £85,000, asked to sign an NDA. Is that a fair reading of what happened? It's a reading of it, and a, a, a pretty accurate one. A spokesman for the Speaker's office said, Mr Speaker strenuously denies there is any substance to any of these allegations. Mr Speaker has a superb team of dedicated, effective and long-serving staff, five of whom have worked for him very happily for a combined total of over 40 years.